So regarding the immigration to Australia, we were working on that project for like three years and we went nowhere. There's super poor communication between the applicant and the people in Australia and they don't really have a good system for healthcare professionals immigrating to Australia. And around, I think, 2012, 2013, there was a debate about the liability of our degree. Um, I mean, not just in Lebanon, but in several countries, but Lebanon was included. So they put us on hold and they were reviewing our qualifications and then after three years from our initial application we just gave up on it. So the beauty about King Faisal is that they have a huge budget for nursing education and they send so many nurses every year for international conferences and they sponsor like the whole trip from the hotel to the food to the daily allowance the flights, the conference registration. And most of these conferences are happening in the States. So I said to myself, what the heck do I have to do to be sponsored by King Faisal? So then I printed out the policy for professional development and there is a section that speaks about uh, sponsorship. What you had to do to be sponsored for a conference is several things and they can't happen overnight. So you have to be a member in a professional organization, you have to be a certified nurse, you have to be an active member in the unit-based council or other committees. So then, I put my goal. I wanna get sponsored to a conference in the United States. And I started working on it. So first off, I got my membership in the Association of Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurses, short for APON, and I also applied for my certification. So the first time I applied for my CPON, which is the Certified Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurse exam, was in 2011 and I failed that because I didn't prepare as much and I had like high self-confidence that I can do it. I've been a pediatric oncology nurse for like two years now, but mm, that's not happening. You have to study because that's a specialty certification. So I was down. And then you can only apply once if you're outside the United States, and that's in November. And so I had to reapply again for next November and wait a whole year to get my chance again to sit for the exam. And that's what I did. I was looking forward for it, and I was gonna be prepared this time. So in 2012, I applied again for my certification in pediatric hematology and oncology, and I got it that time because you know what? I prepared myself for three whole months, and it paid off and I was happy about it. So this certification is good for four years. So initially I got certified in 2012 and then by the end of 2016, I got recertified. And you know, when you get certified, they send you this package and in that package, there's a pamphlet that says if you wanna be an advocate for oncology certification and heck yeah, I filled that application and I sent it back and since 2012 I've been a member in the advocate program for ONCC which is the Oncology Nursing Certification Corporation. So every now and then I ask ONCC to send me gadgets so sometimes they send me like pens, sticky notes, stethoscope tags and much more and that's just to increase awareness about ONCC and usually I distribute them in conferences that has to do with oncology or on the Certified Nurses Day, which is March 19. So by that time, I had like three years of experience in pediatric hematology oncology, and I really loved pizza oncology. And I wanted to do everything I can for this patient population. So one time I was surfing the internet, and I was on the APEN website, and I saw this campaign, the Break Cancer Campaign. And I was reading through it, and it has these tattoos, that you stick them on your cheek, on your hand, on your skin, or whatever, nurses and patients, and you take pictures, and that's to raise awareness around pediatric hematology oncology. So what I did is I contacted APON, and I asked them for these tattoos, and they shipped them all the way to Saudi Arabia. And I talked to my manager, uh, she said, that's a great idea, we gathered the staff, we started putting all these tattoos everywhere, and we took pictures, and what I did is, I took these pictures and I sent them to APON and they published them on the website. At that time, what I wanted to do is just an activity. I didn't think that I would use that in the future, but luckily I did. In 2011, a fellow nurse of mine who I used to work with back in AUBMC, Natalie Badaro, so she told me about this award 
on Apron website, and she, she she told me you should you should apply for it. Like no doubt you should apply for it. And then I looked at the application. It is like a four-page application. So I looked at it. I thought I was eligible. I applied. I filled the application. I sent it by email to Apon. And there's there's a due date. I think it was like March or something. And the results come back in July. So this award is called the International Scholarship Award winner. So basically Apon choose one nurse from outside the United States and give him this award the International Scholarship Award winner and they sponsor him to the Apon yearly conference free of charge they pay for everything conference registration special courses the hotel the flight fare your food the whole deal yeah but I didn't get it in 2011 and then the next year 2012 you're damn right I applied again but you know what happened they didn't get my application. I don't know what happened. So what did I do? You're damn right. I applied again in 2013. And then by 2013, Natalie helped me a bit in my application. Oh, that's a lie. She helped me a lot. And then I won that award. And I was selected as the International Nurse Scholarship winner for the year of 2013. And King Faisal were generous enough to give me, I think three days business leave. And then I went to the States for like eight days. And I didn't pay a penny. And you know the good part about it is I emailed Apon and I told him that my wife is a pediatric oncology nurse as well. So can she come? And they said, of course. So she only paid for her airplane ticket and they upgraded my room into a suite. And then boom, we got our US visa and me and my wife went to the United States for the first time. And the dream came true. So the conference was in Louisville, Kentucky, in the United States. We attended the conference. It was amazing, the best thing ever. And this was my first time attending international conferences. So it's a whole different level from what I'm used to in KSA. So we spent four days in the conference and another four days we were touring around. And you know, we went to tons of museums. Some of you guys don't know, but the hometown of Muhammad Ali Clay was Louisville, Kentucky. And we were there at the time, and he had a huge museum over there. So we went there and we had an amazing time. So fun fact, in 2013 and way before I won the International Scholarship Award, so I started a YouTube channel, it's called Oncology Nursing Certification. On that channel, I put out a video about this award and that I'm going to apply for it. And I told the audience how to look for the application, where to find it, and how to fill it. And if you need any help, I'll be there to help you. And apply, it's a great opportunity. And even I distributed the application on the unit I used to work in, but you know what? No one was interested. Like, no one thought that he could be selected from this whole world to, be, to get this award. And you can see from the dates of the videos that I really was advocating for people to apply. And literally I was willing to help anyone who wants to apply. And then after I got the award, I think I posted another video saying that I got the award and you know, everyone was so surprised. How did he get it? What did he write in that application? How did he convince them? But you know what's in my application? Like there is, I'm a certified nurse. I work in pizza oncology. I failed my first certification test. I made it on the second time. I did this awareness campaign, the break cancer campaign. I showed them the picture. I had a link to my YouTube channel that I'm raising awareness about PEDS oncology and oncology certification in general. I would always celebrate the Pediatric Hematology Oncology Day, which is on September 8th. And I always put pamphlets and brochures on the nursing unit, you know, just to raise awareness. And on September 8th, we do a party. And I'll put, I'll put a link in the description down below one of the videos that I made, I think that was 2014, the Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurses Day Party. 
and I'll put a link in the description box and several more videos. So they felt the passion that I had for pediatric oncology population and they gave me their word. So that was my first visit to the United States.